have a friend who's an intercessor in San Francisco. Um, and he had a vision, and the Lord gave him a vision. He said he saw chains over all major cities in America with a padlock that instead of numbers had letters and you had to spell the word covenant in order to unlock that padlock. It's going to be covenant with one another that's going to break the key. And how many of you guys know when you said yes to Jesus, that was a covenant you made with him, amen? That was the blood that made us whole. And when you say yes to your spouse, that's a covenant you need to walk out, amen? Amen. <laughs> All right. Marriage is not an emotional thing. Sometimes you have to be obedient and understand that love's not emotional. Love is a person named Jesus. And the better I love him, the more I'm able to love my wife. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? So my connection to God allows me to love my neighbor as myself, right? Because I love myself, I come to church. Amen. Because I love myself, I go to Bible study, right? Because I, I love him and I love myself, I'm able to love my neighbor, amen? amen. Love wins. Well, let me rewind. I grew up in a Pentecostal church. I love being Pentecostal. I love my roots. And um, at uh, my sophomore year in high school, as an honor roll student, first Latino kid to play basketball in this high school, um, I was loving life. All of a sudden, my father went back to drinking. My mom kicked him out of the house. I got super depressed for two years. I started to deal drugs. And at 18 years old, on the eve of a party that I was invited to, it was a Saturday night, I was invited to a Sunday night party where I told God, because he abandoned my family, and my mom was an intercessor, super depressed, stayed a whole year in her bedroom after my father left because she was just depressed. She felt like she failed God. I was so upset and so distraught. I said, God... I'm going to lose my virginity, I'm going to get high, and I'm going to get drunk at this party because I want to hurt you the way you hurt me. That's what I told God. Because at that point, I was still a virgin. At that point, I dealt drugs. I, to me, I, didn't, I never got, I was a control freak. To get high and not have control of yourself or to drink and get drunk, that wasn't my thing. I just wanted a lot of money. And I wore it around my neck. I wore it in material things. And I'm going to talk about the symptoms of what an orphan spirit looks like in a little bit. But that was my thing. So on Saturday night, out of nowhere, my second grade Sunday school teacher calls me. He says, Chris, you got to go back to church tomorrow. I said, I'm not going back to church. I don't, I, I'm, 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 I'm too hurt. I'm offended by God. He goes, no, you need to come back because God's doing something with the young people. The fire of God is literally touching young people. And they're falling out, they're crying, they're praying for their friends, they're leading their friends to the Lord, they're healing the sick. And I said, what are you talking about? And he said, he's like, you got to come, Chris. God told me to call you tonight because you're about to make some decisions that are going to ruin your life forever. I was like, oh my gosh. So for three hours, he's trying to convince me. And then he said, you know what, Chris, if you come to church, I'll take you to lunch afterwards. I said, Psh. Fine. <laughs> you should have just started out inviting me to lunch. <laughs> Three hours later, <laughs> I was like, we hungry out here. <laughs> Tired of this government cheese. <laughs> I was like, you would have just said that in the beginning. So I went to church, and I'm telling you, I walked in the building, and I could feel like I feel now, the presence of God, the, the glory, the molecules of God just permeating the atmosphere, and my stomach started to turn like I was about to get in line for a roller coaster. And I started to see all these kids who I used to go to this youth group. It was all clicky, and it was all this gossipy. You know how youth groups were back in the day. And each one of these kids, the most popular girl, like the prettiest girl in the youth group, ran up to me. She goes, oh, my gosh. She has mascara running down her face. God is real. He's going to touch your life, Chris. We've been praying for you. And I was like, what? What's going on? Why is everyone nice? And like, I remember sitting in the balcony and I was in service and, and this revivalist from South Florida was preaching the word of God. And he goes, listen, we're about to go into altar call because I went in for the end of the uh, first um, service so I could stay for the worship in the second service. That was my thing. And so I, I went and he's preaching and he only has 30 minutes to close because they got to get the other service to come in, right? He goes, guys... 
If God's dealing with you today, I want you to come up. And it, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the old Pensacola revival, Brownsville revival tapes, where they were running to the altars. Well, our church, people were just running. It was like 500 people, like in a matter of two minutes, just came up front. And I felt like I needed to go up there, but I was like, nah, that wasn't for me. And then five minutes later, he goes, that wasn't, there's still someone else out there. And I, my stomach started to turn. I was like, no, Lord, like, seriously? And then, like, five people got up and went to the front. I was like, yes, all right. That wasn't for me either. <laughs> Ten minutes later, this pastor goes, there's still one more, and God will not let us start the next service until that person gets up here. I was like, oh, Lord. And then one person got up and ran to the front. And I go, God, if he calls another guy to come up, I'll do it. I'll do it. I won't even think about it. And he looked at the guy and he goes, that's not him. There's still one more. And I got up. I yelled like a little sixth grade girl. I got up and I just ran down here and I came up to the front. And this ex-Hell Angels guy prayed for me. And when he was praying for me, I, I don't know, man. I was like, I'm all new to this. And I'm like, what is this? Why are my knees shaking? There's electricity going through my whole body. Oh, my God, I'm going to fall. Oh my God, I'm too big. I can't fall. Who's going to catch me? Oh, God. And I was like, <laughs> there's a heavy presence on me. And I'm sitting there. I'm all scared. And I'm like, oh, my God, this guy's pushing me. Does he know who he is? I don't know who he's touching. He's like, and I felt like he was pushing me, right? And so I'm about to confront him. I open up my eyes, and he's three P person down. No one was pushing me but the Holy Spirit. So I said, okay, God, if this is you, I'm going to close my eyes, and I'll relent. I closed my eyes. I flew like six feet back. I crushed the whole pastoral section of chairs in this area. And I just laid out. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I was just like, I felt what felt like rivers of living water go through the top of my head to the bottom of my feet, and I cried for six hours straight. When I was on the floor, the Lord spoke to me, first time I ever heard him audibly. He goes, Chris, what do you want? And I started to cry, and I said, I want my dad back home, and I want all my friends to get saved, my street friends. They were running the pharmacy with me. And in 10 years, my wife and I, we led every one of my street friends to the Lord. And after 18 years of divorce, six years ago, I walked my mother down the aisle and she remarried my father. Church, we have to start to learn we have to start to learn to tell God what we want, not what we need. Yes. I'm coming with a message to Jersey. We're going to deal with orphan spirits. Little lies that have been attaching themselves. Church, you're a whole lot better than you think you are. And this is what I want to do. I'm going to read some symptoms. I've gotten together with some of my friends, pastor friends, brothers. I'm going to read 11 symptoms of orphan spirits in the church. Number one, the orphan spirit operates out of insecurity and jealousy. The spirit of sonship functions out of love and acceptance. Number two, the orphan spirit is jealous of the success of his brothers or sisters. The mature son and daughter is committed to the success of his brothers. Number three, the orphan spirit serves God to earn the father's love. The mature son and daughter serve God out of a sense of divine acceptance and favor. Four, the orphan spirit tries to medicate its deep, internal, alienated through physical stimulation. This is where people will go to pornography. The mature son and daughter walk in the joy and the presence of the Lord for comfort. A mature son and daughter will bring those dark things to the light. The orphan spirit is driven by the need for success. The, sp the spirit leads the mature son into its calling and mission. Hallelujah. The, the orphan spirit, again, if I'm, I'm talking to you, just come up. Let's get it dealt with. This is a safe place. This is a family in here. 
The orphan spirit uses people as objects to fulfill goals. The mature son and daughter serve people to bless the kingdom. This is interesting because there's a spirit of abortion in this nation because of this. The orphan spirit repels children. God, give us a revelation. The spirit of sonship attracts children. Come on, we're going deep. The orphan spirit has anger and fits of rage. The spirit of sonship rests in the father's ability to control and guide the future. Come on, you got uncontrollable anger. Come on, just come up. Let's get it dealt with today. The orphan spirit always competes with others. The spirit of sonship is always blessing others. The orphan spirit lacks self-esteem, Jesus. The spirit of sonship walks in love and acceptance of the Father of God. This one's important because this is why I was an orphan. The orphan spirit receives its primary identity through material possessions, physical appearance, and activity. The spirit of sonship. The spirit of sonship is grounded in sonship and the Father's affirmation. Church, we need to deal with this today. Come on. Today, just start... To start asking God, God, I give you that root. I give you the root of that orphan thing in my life. Come on. Never again the same. Shh. Come on. There's a presence of God just thickened in this place. Come on. Shh. More Lord. More Lord. This is not condemnation. This is freedom today. There's freedom in his house. Come on. We're going to deal with this. <laughs> Come on. Some of your testimonies, some of your testimonies are going to use, be used for great, great harvest for the kingdom of God because you dealt with this orphan spirit today. Come on, more, more Lord. Come on, let's just start worshiping him. If you're not up here, just start worshiping him. There's a level of his presence that's thickening, it's increasing in this place. More Lord, more Lord, more Lord. More Lord, more Jesus, more. Yeah, you serve. You serve a limitless God. You determine the limits this afternoon. You determine the limits. Come on, just go. No condemnation. No condemnation. There's freedom in this place. I'm going to lay hands on you. I'm going to pray fresh fire to burn up that orphan lie. Come on. Yes, Lord. Burn it up in their lives, God. Burn it up in their lives, Lord. Fresh fire coming. the Lord wants to do more listen we serve a limitless God but you determine the limits today if you want more of what he's doing come on just cry out it's got more I feel a fresh baptism in this house there's a fire that's that I'm complimenting this morning or afternoon Shh. there's something like a wildfire that's about to just spread and there's a reformation of the word father in this house. We're going to bring back that word. And it's not going to be a word of abandonment. But it's going to be a word of promise. That the father's hearts are turning back to their children. Come on. 
Come on, let's just worship him a little. Can we do that? Let's savor the taste just a little more. 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 Come on, some of y'all need to remember the first time. The first time you said yes to Jesus. Remember when you were lost and his love found you. Remember when you were dead and his love resurrected you. Come on, we need to get excited in the house today. Pastor Abe, your wife, right? The dream needs to be bigger. God is trusting you guys. Orphans are coming. And I feel like this is going to be a cave of Amdullah where you're going to take misfits and make them into mighty warriors. There's psalmists coming to you guys. They're going to come in terrible shape. And you're going to know they're yours. But there's a sound that God wants to cultivate in here. There's some, some dreams that you guys have and God is resurfacing those dreams. But now he wants you to add on to it because those dreams that you're dreamed from I almost feel like 10 years back are now achievable. He wants you to now start having dreams that you're just going to have to depend on him more. Amen. There's a regional authority in this house. <laughs> And so I see, I see men's Bible study that are going to be encounters for fathers that might have left their families that are coming back. And there's a father and mother anointing on you guys. I really sense it, but I feel like this room's not going to be big enough for it. So, so what do you want is what I hear the Lord saying. He wants to give you land. He wants to give you land. He wants to give you, he's trusting your heart. There's a purity and a loyalty that you guys carry it's, it's, it's like it's like he trusts you see you you not only have, are going to get the gifts but you got the gifts because you walk in the fruit of the spirit so it's the gift and the fruit together amen because character is highly valued in here and there's an increase he's expanding your tent pastor i don't say this lightly but i believe that there's a revival that has a date in heaven that we're approaching here in new jersey amen I believe that with my whole heart and you will be a voice into it and I want to just say please get to know my friend Jonathan I just feel like there's a bridge there and my friend Pastor Arthur also as well those guys are just family to me but I want to tell you guys something that we have to confront the orphan spirit because the church is being mauled by giving platforms without character because we honor the gifts that people carry more than we honor the fruit of their lives. Church, I believe that the answer that what America groaning for is Roman 8, mature sons and daughters to be revealed. Yeah, it hurts. When I had to deal with my rejection issue, it hurts. But I am telling you, that it's been so sweet to be able to come to Jesus in your weakest state and he still believes in you. And so I'm going to end it with this. You are a lot better than you think you are. Amen. There is so much presence in here. The worship guys. More Lord. Lord more. Upgrade. They want more Father God. Give them more. It's just an upgrade. Just thank you for their faithfulness. more Lord we want more father hunger has always been the main ingredient in revival <laughs> hunger has gotten the intercessors activated to pray like never before he's coming for his bride so I bless this house Lord thank you Lord for the privilege of coming to your house Lord and delivering this word, bless everyone here, bless their hearts. Some of you guys are gonna start having dreams and God's going to show you some things. Please communicate that to your pastors. <laughs> There's some strategies. I see angels coming with strategies in their hands and delivering it to your head and to your heart. More Lord, come on, more Lord, more. Thank you Jesus. Bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Come on. In me. How many?
many years has this church three and a half father any word curses or assignments against this church lord we ask your presence to dissipate the plans of the enemy and father we release your heart of substance and the word in this place that we will not return I almost feel like there's a lot of people that spoke negative about this church we will not return evil for evil but we will bless those that cursed us Wow. Father, we bless this house. And we say thank you, Lord. Pastor, there's about to be some relationships that have spoken against this house that are going to come back into your life in full repentance. You went low, like Paul tells us. You go low for the sake of the gospel. But there's a revelation of the word of God. He's gonna start giving you some real big nuggets in these next six months. It's gonna be some things you're preaching that are really gonna just snag the heart of whoever comes in here. I just really sense that over your life. But I wanna say, it takes a church to invite someone they really don't know because you're of pastor, Christian, just loyalty to him, you were able to trust what he was gonna bring. And so I wanna say thank you for the opportunity. And I wanna say thank you guys, like, I feel like we're family now. We sweat, we cry together, you know, we do all that, it doesn't take much. But, so I wanna thank you for the invitation. I just feel this heavy burden to pray for the man of God. I usually don't do this, but, you know, there's just so much more. He, 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 he hasn't even reached half of what God has destined for his life. He didn't even tell us one iota of what God has promised him. Hallelujah. You know, I didn't know, I didn't read his bio, and when I presented him, I said about this feeling about young people. You know, oh, this is what the Lord says. For you are, you're trying to weed out fathering teenagers because you say, I have a family, I'm kind of young, I'll wait. But, but you see, there's teenagers in your life right now that have, God is called to ministry. You have seen destiny in young people, in 15 and 16 year olds that are preaching, that, that, that are called to preach and go to even nations. And God is saying, you shall father them even right now. For you shall take them under your wing and you shall lift them up and they shall leave your nest in mighty power and glory. But you shall be daddy for them. Do not fear. Do not worry about age. Do not even worry if they're women because your wife has your back. So even these young girls that you say, no, that's the, let my wife take care of that, get involved. Pray for them. Anoint them. Prepare them for ministry. For there are young people in the Washington, D.C. area full of the glory of God. For it needs to expand. If you just understand the trajectory of what God is saying and doing in this house. I mean, when he did that calling and spoke about spiritual maturity, that's what we taught. That's what my wife taught on Thursday. So those 18 people that were here were blessed and highly favored because they got their confirmation today. And those who came to the altar today and submit those things to God. You just graduated. You know, God doesn't do these things out of a whim. This is not a little show. This is spiritual things that we may not see with our eyes, but in the annals of heaven, it shall be done by faith. You just graduated to a new level. You are moving forward, moving forward, moving forward. We are moving forward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Man, God doesn't talk in vain. God doesn't talk in vain. How many are ready to enlarge our territory? How many are ready to enlarge their territory? How many are maturing in the Holy Ghost, in the Spirit, in their walk with life, that dare say and ask God, enlarge my territory? 
just got to get the things of God a little more serious. Just a little more. Seek God a little more. Just a little more. God is not asking for much. Take him seriously a little more. And he will enlarge your territory. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good.